James and I'm here with the Oracle Outlook for the week starting August the 21st, 2017. Well, this week starts off with a big event and so I'm sure you've heard about it by now and if you haven't, then you must be living under a rock. August the 21st is going to be the day of the solar eclipse and also a new moon in Leo. So we have a big astrological and astronomical event taking place. So with that in mind, I was led to work with one of my tarot playing card decks for this week's reading. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a backstory as to why I chose this particular deck. So as you might know, I think I've talked about this before, sometimes as soon as I shoot the previous week's video, I'm already in my mind thinking about the following video and the deck choice and all of that kind of thing. So I was feeling led to work with the Arcana Tarot playing cards this week. So that's a deck selection. And so what led to that is I was shown working with a line of five using that particular deck. And so I thought for me that because it's one of the decks I use in my own personal practice, you know, my own personal study of the cards, that I thought I was expanding from um, working with three cards in my personal polls to expanding to five cards. So I kind of just went with that. So I, I did one and I journaled it and I just didn't really think anything more of it until I actually was preparing to shoot this video this morning. So as I was preparing for the video shoot, I all of a sudden got like a, a download, if you will, of information regarding the deck choice and the reason for the line of five. So the reason for the deck choice, what I love about this deck is that it's a normal deck of playing cards, but it also has 22 cards from the Major Arcana of Tarot uh, fused into the deck to make up a total um, 78 card deck. So there's that. And so as I was working with the line of five, the five as a number represents change, right? And with that, the incorporation of working with the playing cards and the tarot cards or the major arcana is that if a major arcana card shows up in this week's reading it's an energetic theme if you will for this week going or going along with or coinciding with this solar eclipse event that's happening because if i remember correctly the last time we had this type of solar eclipse was 38 years ago so this is a big deal Right? So going along with that, because major arcana cards in tarot represent important issues or events. For me, they represent like the energetic themes, if you will, and then the playing cards in this particular deck will be the ways that those themes get to be expressed. It's almost like the playing cards will be the ways that we can ground whatever energetic themes show up in this week's reading. But the interesting thing about the number five, the number five is all about change. and so. From what I understand, I'm not an astronomer or an astrologer, but from what I understand, there can be some significant energetic changes or shifts that could be happening for us both individually and collectively as a result of this solar eclipse. So that is my way of introducing why I'm using this particular deck. So again, we are going to be working with the Arcana Tarot Playing Cards the deck is by Chris of Dianco uh, of Debt on Paper. So now that I've introduced the deck, let's go ahead and get to this week's reading. And so I have the deck on hand. I have the deck on the table in front of me. So I'm going to go ahead and take a moment to shuffle the cards. And as I do for these weekly general readings, my intention is always asking what do we need to know for the week ahead? So I'm feeling that's good. I'm going to go ahead and cut the cards.
And now I'm going to fan them out. And what I'm doing is I'm looking for five cards this week in the fan that are getting my attention. And these will make up our cards for the week, putting the remainder of the deck aside. And so if you're no stranger to when I work with Lenormand and Kipper cards, when I'm working with a line of five, I always start with the middle card. So I was given the same way to proceed with that. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the middle card. Again, the middle card is going to be representative of uh, a central issue for the week ahead or something that we're being asked to focus on. So the card is, okay, so I love when this happens. If you're no stranger to my videos, sometimes I pick a... Uh, a deck and when I pick the deck I am given a flash of a card and so when that happens I'm always given a message as to what to say when that card appears and this has happened right here so the card here is judgment and I saw this card actually earlier this morning when I got that download this is one of the cards I saw a few cards but this is one of the cards that came up in that download so what I'm supposed to say is this so Judgment is a major arcana card, so this is one of those cards that represents an important issue, event, or uh, an energetic theme coinciding with the solar eclipse. So Judgment is a card, when it comes up, it can represent, you know, adopting a new lease on life, right? So some of us were being asked to really be honest. I tend to look at this card as like, you know, radical honesty, right? Because this card represents you know, um, being really honest with yourself. This is about being radically honest with yourself and about taking decisive action about changes that you want to create in your life, right? So it starts off with a declaration because I'm looking at the image. And so here we have an angel blowing a horn. And so sometimes this is representative of Archangel Gabriel, right? So here we have like an announcement um, uh, uh, a declaration, if you will, about making some kind of change, right? And so once you make the declaration, then you have to decide what courses of action that are going to coincide with the that declaration, you know, for those changes that you want to make. But this card is about being radically honest. You're evaluating your life because this card also for me represents Archangel Jeremiah, who is the angel of life review. So I'm seeing Archangel Jeremiah in my head. So this is a time where we're actually doing some sort of life review and asking ourselves, where do we want to go from here? Now that could be individually and that could be as a collective, right? Because I talked about that. For some people, because this card comes up when we are questioning why are we here? What's our reason for being? And I do this quite often and so judgment validates that for me. I call this, you know, being in a place of existential angst. Like you are searching for your calling, your mission, your life's purpose. You know, what is it that you're here to do? And so it could be that you're being asked to um, ponder on that or that you're going to get some clarity around that this week. And that may be as a result of the shifts in energy that come along with the solar eclipse, right? And also the new moon. New moon energy is all about, you know, um, beginnings, you know, creating something, moving into a new sphere or phase. So there's that um, energy being validated with this card as well. So again, it could be some people are going to be looking at their lives and moving in a new direction. You know, some people are going to have to be radically honest with themselves about where they are and where they want to be. And then some people are going to be really pondering like bigger picture, like what's the meaning of my life? What is it that I'm here to do? And how can I go about the business? Of moving in that direction right so there's that the other thing that I'm seeing and so this coincides with the more traditional image of judgment so I saw the traditional image in my mind and so in that depiction it has people rising up from coffins it looks like right so there's Archangel Gabriel at the top blowing the horn and then people are rising up out of their coffins so 
when I saw that in my mind, I was given this message to say with that. So in light of that, the people rising up from the coffins could be like, you know, a rebirth, a rejuvenation, that kind of thing, a resurrection, if you will. So there's that. But it's also about um, working on rising up out of whatever limitations or restrictions, whether they are self-imposed, meaning that we place them on ourselves, or that we have allowed other people to place them on us. But it's about rising above, rising out and above of those limitations and restrictions in this physical world, right? It's about um, going beyond that. And so I looked at the coffins when I saw it in my mind. I looked at the coffins and it's about, you know, the idea about like people being put into boxes, right? So it's about like whether you put yourself in a particular kind of box or you've been boxed in in a way, and sometimes we do that with categories, you know, the way we kind of label people and the way we label ourselves or, you know, our identity, right? So I'm seeing that, as, so there may be an identity shift that happens, but judgment in and of itself, it's about, it's about we're being uh, called to wake up. This is a time of spiritual awakening, right? And so some people call that ascension, so some people may be having an awakening process during their time of ascension, so there could be that. But whatever it is, we're all being called to rise up. I'm thinking, for me, it represents the idea of, you know, when we identify people or identify things, it's about learning to go beyond those labels, right? I'm thinking, for some people, this is all about a shift in the way you are perceiving yourself or the way that you are perceiving your world. So that's a lot to say about judgment, but that's all the energy I got with that one card. So now, what I was instructed to do was to look at the cards one by one, starting with the card on the far left. So here we have, mm, okay, so here we have the Nine of Clubs. Whenever this card comes up for me, it reinforces what I just said about judgment in a way, because we are being nudged, if you will, gently, because Archangel Gabriel is known as a nudging angel, right? So we are being nudged gently by, uh, by spirit, by the divine, whatever you want to call that energy in your life. But we're all being gently guided or you know, nudged into a new direction. The nine in this regard is a number that represents gain or attainment, right? So sometimes this is about looking at ourselves. So this is about our a psychological or spiritual journey, if you will, with this card, right? So there's that energy with it. Um, I'm asking what else do I need to say about that? That's usually the bigger, biggest thing with this card for me. Yeah, so this is about like maybe gaining or attaining some sense of um, clarity around that. Oh, this is the other thing. For those people who are looking at what it is that they're here to do, the nine is a, a number that represents divine life purpose. You know, And this also, too, can represent collective energy because the nine represents brotherhood and it represents humanity. It represents doing things of a philanthropic nature. So some people may be called to do that. Some people may be called to be working on themselves. And then there may be other people who are being called to do collective work. Right? So because clubs represents work, business, you know, that kind of thing. But it can also represent social activity and social progress. So that's with the nine of clubs. Next card. Oh, I love this. Okay. This is the three of diamonds. So for some of us, this may be a time of increase. That's the number three. The three represents increase and expansion. Right? So with some people... Going with the idea of life purpose, I talked about that, right? With this card, it could be exploring your life purpose, but in the form of career. You know, because life purpose can be about one spiritual path, and maybe that's with the nine of clubs. But for some of us, when we talk about life purpose, we're talking about like the work we are here to do. So for some people, they may get a sense of being closer to whatever that idea is. For other people, if you are working in whatever you feel you have been called to do, this is the week where you may gain some sort of recognition or some sort of attention because I'm seeing that. So there may be some sort of increase with the work that you're already doing. So I'm seeing that with the three of diamonds. One other thing could be like for someone who may be making um, some sort of um, decisions or evaluation with the work, sometimes this card can represent looking at part-time work or temporary full-time work. So it could be like you may be looking at ways to maybe increase your income, and that may be through the idea of, you know, seeking other work, 
right? So there is that with the three of diamonds. Now moving to the card on the other side of judgment, we have, okay, so here we have the page of hearts. So the page of hearts is a face card. So for me, when I'm working generally with cards like this for these types of readings, I tend to look at this as, you know, uh, an approach kind of thing, or like a way that we can all approach the week ahead. This card represents for some of us, and I'm going with the idea of the energy with um, the solar eclipse taking place this week. For some of us, when the page of hearts shows up, this represents heightened sensitivity. So that some of us may have energetic and uh, sensitive reactions to um, the shifts that are taking place. This card can come up when there is a new either spiritual experience or emotional experience that's going to be emerging this week, going with the idea about judgment and the people rising up from the coffins. This is about something that's emerging, but it's going to be something new. When this card comes up, we are all being encouraged to be guided and led by our intuition this week. This is a, a very highly intuitive card, but we're learning about that. So some of us may be exploring new ways or a, you know a, a new way of receiving intuitive information is developing and you're being asked to learn more about that so this could be just about like how does your intuition speak you know and if you may have been receiving one mode of intuitive information and you see a shift in that like i'll give you an example like for me personally i'm clairvoyant because you hear me talk about like i see flashes of images right so that's my primary mode and so for me that's mental images right and then my secondary mode is a clear audience where I hear messages, right? You know, some, and most of the times that's in lines of music and I have to kind of find out what the meaning is within that person, uh, particular line of music. So there may be like somebody, you know, their primary mode may be one particular way and then they see a shift in that. But whatever it is, we're being asked to kind of um, be gentle with ourselves because we may be highly sensitive this week. So that is the page of hearts. And the last card rounding out the line, ooh, okay. Here we have another major can of cards. So this is the star. So this is an interesting thing. So for some of us, we may be encouraged to, and this may be where the emotional sensitivity comes in, we may be encouraged to be more of who we are, right? Remember that talk that I talked about, the categories and the labels and the identification? The star card can represent moving into a space where we are willing to uh, be vulnerable. We are willing to be authentic. We are really standing in the idea of like, this is who I am. What you see is what you get kind of thing, right? So there's that. The other thing about the star, and this is interesting when I talked about the person who may be working on career related issues, this card would be like whatever it is that you're doing, how can you seek more visibility or that you will gain some sort of recognition for your work? Because this card represents like almost like a celebrity type status, right? So it represents fame, it represents recognition, it represents being visible, being seen. And so here's the thing. And regardless how that shows up, whether it's in your personal life or your professional life, the idea of being seen, if it makes you uncomfortable, this is an opportunity to become more comfortable with that. Right? So if you have challenges around being seen, being visible, you're going to be working with that this week. Right? So there's that. The other thing about the star card, the star card for me can represent healing energy. I tend to look at this as a Reiki card. So if you're a Reiki practitioner, you're being encouraged to do two things. Number one, I always talk about you know, physician heal thyself. So if you're a Reiki practitioner, this is a week where you are really being asked to be gentle with yourself and making sure that you are giving yourself Reiki treatments. Right, And then also, as you're doing that, you're going to be called on possibly to send out Reiki healing energy to the world. I remember saying this last week, so I'm going to say it again this week. I said based on things that are going on in this world, and the solar eclipse is kind of stirring the pot with that, because I heard someone else say that the solar eclipse is like the energy that kind of agitates stuff that's already going on. So... We may be seeing more things going on in the world this week. And if you're a Reiki practitioner or any kind of healing modality, you're being asked, like I said last week, to put that healing energy to work for the collective. So there's that. The last thing with the star card that I want to say, for some of us, we may be moving into spheres where we are exploring more metaphysical or esoteric topics or subjects, 
right? And this card is the go-ahead for that. So for some of us, and this is very interesting, for some people, it may be they, be, they may be called or moving more into astrology. Isn't that interesting? We talked about the new moon and the solar eclipse. So there's that. For some people, they may be moving more into numerology. For some people, they may be moving into tarot or card reading types of divination. So I'm seeing that because I usually see all those things with this card. But whatever it is, you're being asked to learn more about it. And if you're being called to move into that, this is the time to develop that gift or talent. And so on that note, I will end and wrap up this week's Oracle Outlook. I'm Jameson Mitchell, and as I close, I'd like to thank you for sharing space here with me for this week's reading, and I look forward to sharing the same space with you again in our next video reading together. So until then, I'm hoping that you have a wonderful day, and I'm hoping that you have a tarot-tastic week. Take care.